A very good evening uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers in Christ. So today uh, we are going to see a subject uh, about uh, prayer. So uh, thousands of people uh, pray every day. It is one of the important thing done by all the people you uh, see in this world, irrespective of uh, any religion. <clears throat> everybody offers prayers to God. So, what does actually prayer mean? You see, somebody praying to God, what does it actually mean? You see, uh, that actually means that uh, they are, uh, you see, dependent on uh, some uh, supreme uh, power which is much higher than them. And uh, they know that uh, some things which they can't do, you see, so they want uh, this uh, supreme power to help them to do it. So, actually, prayer on part of anybody shows that they have faith on the Creator. Let it be anybody, they have faith that there is a God, you see, and God is actually pleased with such a prayer because when nobody is believing and trusting in God, at least some people have faith in God. And uh, they believe that it is a superior power which uh, helps us, you see. Hence, uh, uh, the prayer is actually expectation that uh, uh, they want uh, God's help. You see, they seek uh, sympathy, they seek concern, they seek care, especially during the times of difficulties uh, and trials. So, when do actually... Uh, some people pray. You see, some people pray only in particular time. You see, they don't uh, pray to the Lord, you see, every now and then. They pray only in particular time. They have a fixed time in the morning or else uh, before going to bed, uh, you see, they pray. But, uh, you see, they don't pray, you see, whenever uh, there is necessity at all. Uh, you see, but, uh, and uh, these people, you see, they just pray without knowing the meaning, meaning of it. Why they are praying? What is the purpose of prayer? You see, they simply pray because it is their duty. You see, they would have been taught from childhood to pray to the Lord. As soon as they wake up and before sleeping, they need to pray to the Lord. So, that would have become a habit for them. It is just like brushing the tooth in early in the morning. Some people don't, don't know why they are brushing up. Simply early in the morning, wake up, they go and brush it and come. That's all. So similarly, prayer also has become a customary. They would be actually praying with their mouth, but their words will be quite far away. It will be totally meaningless. You see, read Isaiah 29.13. Isaiah 29.13. Uh, Ashish Brother, Brother Mausam has requested you to read the Bible. Okay, Brother. When prayer becomes a meaningless routine. Isaiah 29, 13, Brother, you need to open the Bible. That's just uh, some wordings. Okay, please wait, Brother. Hmm. Okay, don't worry. Isaiah twenty nine thirteen. Right. Uh, wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Very good. So they just pray, but their heart is very far from God. So some people pray like this only. You see, the lips are not synchronized with the hearts. The hearts will be somewhere else, they'll just keep on being praying. And still, there are some other people 
who pray only when there is trouble. These are like Apostle Peter. You see, Jesus clearly warned the disciples that uh, before the cock, uh, you see, cross uh, three times, uh, you see, you will deny me. But Peter did not heed to the warning of uh, Jesus Christ. That's what happened. I mean, not enough to do seven years to sleep. Jesus clearly came and warned them, you see, to be awake and pray. You see, watch and pray. Read Matthew 26, chapter 34 and 35. Jesus said unto him, Verily I said to thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I, will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Oh, you see, likewise also said the disciples. Peter was full confident that he would never reject Christ. But what happened? You see, he rejected Christ three times. Read verse 41 also, Buddha. Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes, therefore Jesus clearly told the disciples to watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. See, prayer is a very, very important. You see, so some people, they never pray until they are in temptation. You see, when they yield to temptation only, they pray to the Lord. Never before they approach the God in prayer at all. See, dear brethren, there are two things. See, being tempted is one thing and yielding to temptation is other thing. See, like for example, Jesus Christ, he was tempted in all ways, isn't it? When the devil uh, came and tempted him, you see, he was tempted in all the ways. But uh, did Jesus sin? If you see, no, Jesus never sinned. He was without sin. Read Hebrews 4.15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Yes, yet without sin. Jesus was tempted in all the ways, sir, like as we are. But one thing, difference between us and Jesus is that he is without sin. But similarly, you see, we are all tempted in the same way. In all the angles, Jesus was tempted. But uh, we don't, you see, huh? stay without sinning. We will definitely sin now. You see, that is the difference between us and Jesus. Therefore, you see, whenever we see any danger, immediately we should approach the Lord in prayer. We should not wait till the end of the day. You see, when we go and uh, close everything, uh, close the day, at the end of the day, go and approach God, we should not wait uh, till that moment. Uh, as soon as we realize any danger, that moment only, we should be able to approach God at all the time. See, dear brother, you see, there are uh, two things. Uh, being tempted is one thing and uh, falling into temptation is one thing. Like, for example, you see, we can't prevent uh, the birds uh, from uh, flying over uh, our head. Uh, see, we can't prevent it. Uh, but we can prevent the birds from making nest over our head. Uh, so similarly, we can't escape the temptation. Temptations are sure to come. But we should be very sure that we don't fall into those temptations. See, like for example, Jesus, you see, Jesus was tempted, isn't it? The Bible says that Jesus was tempted after 40 days, uh, you see, what happened? Uh, uh, the uh, tempter came to him and tempted, you see, Jesus was tempted, but did he sin? No, he did not yield to the temptations, that is the reason he did not sin. Uh, therefore, watching and prayer, both are very, very important. Uh, Jesus, after 40 days of fasting, after 40 days of meditation, he was tempted by a devil in various ways. But Jesus did not commit any sin. Why? 
because Jesus was alert and always watching in prayer. This is what he advised to the disciples. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Therefore, you see, you see uh, we should be as much as far as possible, you see, from the temptation. You see, uh, one day what happened? There was an interview going on for a driver selection it seems, in a company. So, <clears throat> there, the company owner asked uh, to all the drivers who came for the interview, see, uh, how fast you'll drive and uh, when you're going on the top of the mountain, a very dangerous, uh, you see, uh, place, uh, uh, the mountain is very, uh, you see, high. If anything happens, you'll fall down. Uh, so, how much close can you take the car to the edge of the road? Uh, you see, the question was, I think, sir. So everybody replied, sir, I'll take very, very, just few inches uh, far from the uh, this, uh, end of the road, uh, so edge of the road. And some people told, uh, I'll take uh, nearly one feet uh, uh, far from the uh, see, edge of the road. So, nobody was selected. Ultimately, last person went for the interview, it seems, sir. So, the same question was put to him. So, he, instead of answering uh, the owner, he asked, uh, Sir, how big uh, or how wide is the road? Please tell me. He told the road is nearly more than uh, 20 feet wide. So, he replied, I will stay as far as possible from the corner and the edge of the road uh, so that I can be safe. So, the job went for him. So similarly, you see, we can't avoid our temptations in our life. Temptations are sure to come. But we need to be as far as possible from these temptations. Therefore, Jesus said, watch and pray. So these two things have to be done by a Christian. Watch as well as pray. You see, the Christian can be compared to a beautiful tree. You see, the Bible says now, the writers are like a tree. You see, whose leaves never fade away, gives fruit in the season. So, the Christians are like a beautiful, wonderful tree. And the prayer of a Christian is like a leaf. So, some people, you see, just keep on praying. There's no study at all. And the study of the word of God is like a root. You see, if you just keep on praying without any study, what will happen to the tree? You see, it will be just uh, beautiful to good look at but if the wind blows, the trees will get uprooted. You see, some people are other way around. You see, they don't even pray at all. Just keep on studying, studying, studying. But these people will be rooted and grounded. But they won't be any leaf. So if there is no leaf, what will happen? There won't be any fruit on a tree. So both are important. See, leaf is also important. To give good fruits and to be strongly rooted is important uh, to stay there. Therefore, these two things are important. Study the word of God. Watch ourself. Watch our situation. Watch our uh, times and seasons. Uh, to see, watch the word of God. Uh, therefore, the root is also important. The leaves is also important. For a bird, how many wings are required? Just for one wing, you can't fly. So, two wings are important. So, similarly for a Christian, steady, you see, and watching is important. Therefore, Jesus said, watch and pray. Now, what does Apostle Paul say? Let us read 1 Thessalonians 5.16, brother. 1 Thessalonians 5.16, brother. 5.17, sir. First Thessalonians 5.17. Pray without ceasing. Oh, see, pray without ceasing. Therefore, Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing means what? Continuously we should keep on praying. Some people are really fanatic only. You see, they always keep on blabbering, blabbering, blabbering. And they think that they are praying to the Lord or praying the Spirit, continuously praying. You see? Huh? What does it mean to repeat the same thing again and again? Do repetitions. What did Jesus say? 
Jesus said, use not vain repetitions. Read with Matthew 6, 7. Hmm. Matthew 6, 7. But when you pray, but when you pray, use not vain reputation as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Ah, you see, for much speaking, they think they will be heard very soon. So, Jesus said, use not vain reputations. You see, keep on repeating the same thing. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were like this. Uh, Dear brother, so Jesus clearly said, don't reuse the vain repetitions. Keep on doing the same thing. Some people keep the rosary and repeat the same thing. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, Master, Master, King. Oh, Jesus. Always so keep on repeating the same thing. What did Jesus say? Use not vain repetitions as the Gentiles do. That means uh, these are done by the people who don't know the Lord. So uh, they think uh, that uh, just because they're speaking too much or repeating the same thing, God hears them. Uh, no, dear friend. Okay, then what is the meaning of Apostle Paul? What did he say? That, uh, you see, uh, pray without ceasing. You see, pray without ceasing means uh, our heart condition, our attitude should always be towards prayer. Let it be any situation, we should not wait for the end of the day to take it to the Lord in prayer. If we have any situation, then and there itself, our heart and our mind should always be in that attitude. You see, so whenever we fall, we should have a spirit, we should have that attitude that we go to the Lord in prayer and request for more grace, more help. And ask for forgiveness, you see, and strength, you see, overcome, you see, thank God that God has given this trial. This is the meaning of a prayer without ceasing. Always our heart condition should be towards prayer. We should not wait till the end of the day to take the matter to the Lord. If we have any situation, immediately on the spot, we should be able to take to the Lord. See, there was an example of Nehemiah. We all know Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a cupbearer in the empire of uh, Medo Persians. You see, and once uh, he was uh, bearing uh, the cup of uh, wine uh, to the king. And as soon as the king saw him, the king was much troubled. Then what happened? Let us read book of Nehemiah, second chapter. Nehemiah, second chapter, verse one, brother. And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Arthazera, that is the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it into the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Oh, I took up wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. You see, Nehemiah was never sad in the presence of the king. Why? Was he comparer? What do you mean by cupbearer? Always the king is to have the cup and it is, is his duty just to pour the wine? No. Cupbearer means whatever the king eats and drinks, this one has to be first tasted and ate and drunk by this cupbearer. Why? Because if the enemies put some poison, it would first affect him, then only it will affect the king. If somebody is plotting to king, kill the king, God. Therefore, Nehemiah was always supposed to be cheerful before the king. But that day was very sad, it seems, a very dangerous situation. Now, next, what happened? Verse 2, brother. Huh? Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. And I was very sore afraid. Ah, the king asked him, King Saul, Why are you sad today? Always you are not like this one now. Huh? By seeing your countenance, uh, King clearly identified, this is not any sadness. This is sadness of what? Tell me what happened. Because 
It was actually a fearful thing for the king because if his face is sad, it means indirectly something is fishy. Something is uh, happening. There will be a plot to kill the king also. Therefore, king asked him, tell me what happened. Then Nehemiah opens his heart to the king and tells her, huh? Oh my king, how can I be happy by my father's sepulchre or without walls and without gates and consumed with fire? Then king said, okay, make your request. I will help you. Read verse 4. Brother. Then the king said unto me, for what to do do make requests. So I prayed to God of heaven. Mm, you see, the king asked her, then the king said unto me, for what those do make request? What do you want? What help do you want to tell me? What request do you want to tell me? And the Bible says, so I prayed to the God of heaven. You see, Nehemiah prayed to the God of heaven. Now, where do you pray? He is in the king's presence. He is a cupbearer. Everybody is standing there. You see, Bible says, Nehemiah prayed to the God of heaven. And immediately verse 5 says, And I said unto the king. So, Nehemiah prayed in the presence of the king. Now you tell me, what would be the prayer of Nehemiah? In front of the king, king has asked the question, on the spot, Nehemiah should reply. But before replying, he says, he prayed to the Lord. Now, what could have Nehemiah prayed? Tell me. Muslim brother, you there? What could have been the prayer of Nehemiah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Uh, loudly, correct. Mm. In the time, huh? uh, ne Nehemiah uh, prayed like. Um, hmm. What? He has got only two seconds' time. You see, he could not kneel down before the king, but he should pray in his heart to the Lord. Now, what could have he prayed? What could have he prayed? In two seconds, what can we pray to the Lord? Just mm, maybe, maybe. Uh, just see the condition. Uh, you know, uh, you say only one thing. Lord, <laughs> let thy will be done. You see, because oh, in the in first chapter, he has already poured his heart before to the Lord. Now, God has made this opportunity to grant the permission from the king. In the presence of king, there is only one thing that he can do. Immediately pray to the Lord when he's got He just uh, in his heart, thought, let thy will be done. And immediately presented to the king. That is, pray without ceasing. Nehemiah did not take opportunity, request to the king, oh, king, please give me the permission, pray, go to the house, pray to the Lord and come back and give you the answer. No. He is prayed on the spot. You see, so that is the meaning of uh, pray without ceasing. You see, so this uh, attitude of Prayer always is actually showing that our dependence upon God, our trust on the God, and less on the self. You see, so it shows our desire to do the Lord's will. Always we want to do the Lord's will, we want to develop into Christ likeness, and any imperfection or if any, you see, uh, a deficiency from our side, it actually shows to our God. That we want to overcome it. Uh, we have a desire to fight against it. Uh, you see, you should never hesitate to take all our personal matters to God. Because he knows everything. You see, even our sins also, you see, God knows. Uh, so we should be able to confess everything open heartedly to the God. Just think, uh, whom do we have in heaven? Whom do we have in earth? Uh, you see, there is none closer than our God, you see. But uh, in spite of all these things, people, you know, what do they do? Instead of sharing all these things to God, they go and share it to their neighbors, their friends, their relatives, their brothers and sisters, you see. And what can they help? You see, they can only use some comforting words. But God is the one who answers our prayer. 
read Psalms 139, 1 to 4. Psalms 139, 1 to 4. Most of you are able to read. That's what I'm a bit difficult. Okay. Okay, okay. Ashish, please read that. Oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting in mine uprising. Thou understand my thought afar off. Thou compassed my path and lying down, and acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but O oh Lord, thou knowest it altogether. See, there is not a word in my tongue, but the Lord, thou knowest it altogether. God knows each and every words even before we speak God. You see, God knows what we are going to speak, what is going to come from our heart. You see, dear brethren, so we should be able to pour our hearts to God. But you know, you know people, what they do? They go on sharing to everybody. You see, at least if the brethren uh, use it in a proper way and help them, it's good. Otherwise, if they go and tell to everybody about our weaknesses and problems and all, the problem, instead of getting, you see, less, it will be doubled. Dear brethren, you see, and uh, we should never think uh, that God is seeking opportunity to find fault in us. No. When did God love us? Uh, when we were sinners. Uh, you see, when we were sinners, God loved us and gave his only son. Now, after accepting Christ, we are fighting so much of battle to please the Lord, to live a life which is uh, uh, precious in his sight, which brings comfort to him. In all these things, uh, when we are struggling, always our Lord is sympathetic towards us. He is always there to help us and he doesn't seek opportunity to find fault in us. Read Hebrews 4 chapter 15 and 16. For you have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like us as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Ah, so therefore let us come boldly to the throne of grace, boldly, without any hesitation. You see, we will be the deadly of the sinners, the worst of all the sinners, sir. yet we should come boldly to the throne of grace, sir. You see, seeking mercy, seeking help in the time of need. God will always be there to help us. Remember, whenever we take everything, you see, everything to the Lord in prayer, you see, we should not expect that all, whatever we tell, only the only should happen. You see, we should expect, you see, only God's will to happen. Because God has his own plan and he won't change his plan for anything of our preferences, of our desire. No, he won't change anything at all. We should pray, Lord, let thy will be done. This is what Jesus prayed. You see, in Matthew 26 chapter, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, you see, what did Jesus pray? He prayed, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. But yet, uh, not my will, but thy will be done. This was the attitude of Jesus. Uh, you see, to always surrender to God's will. So similarly, we should also pray, Lord, let thy will be done. And sometimes, uh, our prayers are not immediately answered. You see, they are delayed. You see, they will be delayed in answers uh, to our prayers. But, uh, we should never get discouraged, but keep praying to the Lord. You see, God knows the right time, and sometimes our prayers are delayed, so we may realize the preciousness of the thing which was requesting from the Lord in our prayer. You see, God did not answer the people of Israel's prayer for deliverance of Egypt immediately. You see, God nearly waited for 215 years, sir. You see, then only <coughs> God answered her. You see, the prayer of Israel. So similarly, 
you see huh? god takes time but yet we need to continue to pray to the lord and uh, you know some people they misunderstand this prayer concept and think uh, that uh, if we need to ask we need to ask whatever we want because jesus said no not can you shall be open unto you seek can you shall find ask can you shall uh, we get uh, uh, ask can you shall get it so they keep on asking the lord the thing that god is like a atm put the card and ask keep on asking god will give, keep on giving you see they would have fallen into depth uh, they would have made lot of loan so they won't got to answer their prayer and clear all their loan you see they would have uh, not studied well they want god to answer their uh, question papers you see some people they want uh, god to bring shaita you see they want uh, god to give them good wealth good food health job marriage word all completely worldly things you see they were not married the request for marriage dear brethren you see eh? why because jesus said uh, you see in john 15 7 that uh, whatever you want you ask uh, and uh, your prayer should be answered read brother john 15 7 brother john 15 7 brother If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. You ask whatever you want, it shall be done unto you. Because of this verse, the people think that we should ask whatever we want. Whatever comes to our mouth, we should ask. Because Jesus said, whatever you ask, it shall be done unto you. And the, the pray, fight with the Lord, prayer warrior, like Jacob fought an entire night now. So they also keep fighting to the Lord until their prayer is answered. Imagine, you see, huh? will uh, we like our children to fight with us and uh, put their petitions before us, put their requests before us? You see, if the child wants to ask uh, uh, ice cream, uh, if they come and fight and come and ask, oh, father, mommy, daddy, I want ice cream, I want ice cream, keep on giving. And if they keep on shouting, if they keep on screaming, will we really feel like giving them? You see, Daily brother, same way with God. There is a proper way to approach God. We just can't keep on shouting and screaming and uh, until God answers our prayer. That means, you see, there is a condition for our prayers to be answered. What is the condition? You see, huh? can we ask whatever you want? Read James 4.3 brother. Read brother. He asks and receives not because he asks a means that you may consume it upon your lust. Mm. You ask and you receive not because you want to consume it upon your own lust. You see, because of your selfish desire, your prayers are unanswered. You see, so the prayers are not answered. But this clearly proves and shows us that there is a particular way to approach God. Not that we ask everything that God will give us. That means, there is a particular thing to ask, a particular way to ask. Okay? Now, what is the condition that God should answer all our prayers? Let us read John 15, 7 again. Read brother, John 15, 7 again. There the condition is given brother. Huh? If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. And it will be done for you. Ah, if my, if you remain in me, first condition. Next, uh, uh, if my words remain in you, second condition. If these two conditions are met, you ask whatever you want. You see, what does God say? God will answer your prayers. Now, what is the meaning of this one? You see, uh, we should be in the Lord and uh, God's word should be within us. We should be, in the Lord means, we should be baptized in Christ. You see, that means we should be consecrated to the Lord in Christ, not in the world, not in the false teachings. After learning the truth, you see, we should be immersed into the death of Christ. And that is the way we become the body of Christ. That is the meaning, remain in you. We should abide in Christ. We should be one of the body members of Christ. You see, now who is a real Christian? John 8.31, brother. John 8.31. 
Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Ah, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. So, if you want to be a true disciple of faith, we need to continue obey his commandments. You see, that is the meaning to be in Christ and my words be in you. you know, now, you tell me genuinely, one who is really consecrated to the Lord, who is dedicated his life completely to the Lord, okay, huh? and uh, he is immersed himself into the death of Christ, and God's words abide in, in him, now what will he ask? You tell me, will he ask for uh, personal selfish prayers, personal things and all? No. Now he won't ask for uh, all these things. Uh, you see, he will ask, let thy will be done. He will ask only for heavenly things. Why? Because, you see, all the worldly things, God has promised that he will take care. You see, the one who is really consecrated, you see, the one who is really abiding in God's words, he knows all the promises of God that they are true in him. God will definitely keep his promises. Sir. What does the promise say? Read Matthew 6, chapter 31 to 34. Matthew 6, 31 to 34. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your mm. heavenly yeah. father. For all these things, who seek it himself? Gentiles, what we are going to eat, what we are going to stay, what we are going to wear. You see, all these things are sought by the Gentiles who don't know God. But the people knowing God should have faith on him. Continue with huh? For your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Uh -huh. Take therefore no thought for the tomorrow. See? For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. See? Uh, see, give us the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added to God. God knows that you need of all these things, dear brethren. You see? Huh? Doesn't our children, uh, uh, you see? What do the children uh, request? Uh? Do they request every day in the morning? Mama, please give me a breakfast. Huh? Daddy, please give me school fees. Huh? Do the children ask every day? No. They have so much of faith on the parents, they know that very well that they will give them food and water, clothing, you see, fees, everything, rent, rent, everything, everything. They all take care. Do they really worry? No. Similarly, we should be like God's children, God's sons who have faith on the Lord. He would never give us evil things. He would give us good things only. We should have faith. Therefore, what did Jesus say? Your prayer should be in faith. Now, how many times did uh, Apostle Paul or uh, Peter or Jesus pray selfishly for themselves? You see, for food, uh, butter, uh, you see, health, uh, wealth, uh, no different. They never prayed for any of these things. They knew that all these things are taken care of by the Lord. You see, they present. Instead of praying for the worldly things, there are a lot of things for us to pray and thank the Lord. We should, uh, you see, ask the Lord for the forgiveness of sins, for the strength uh, to overcome, you see, for the godliness, request for more godliness, you see, request for more grace to develop the Holy Spirit, uh, ask for more of the Holy Spirit, uh, you see, and if we ask such things, God would never tell us no. You see, Jesus compared the evil parents to himself. You being evil know what good things to give to your children. Doesn't God know? God knows to whom to give the Holy Spirit. Instead of giving a request in our prayer, our prayer should be more in thanking the Lord. You see, thank the Lord for the good health. Thank the Lord for the good food. Thank the Lord for the truth. You see, this wonderful truth which nobody knows, we should thank the Lord for it. We should thank the God for our protection, divine protection, for forgiveness of sins, for grace and mercy, for the wonderful brother that God has given us. You see, these things has to be more in our prayers than request of petitions. All these things should be asked in 
there in faith. Jesus said, no, no, in faith, if you ask, it will be done unto you. If in faith, if you say, a mountain to be removed, it will be removed. You see, and how you lengthy should our prayer be? Our lengthy, our prayer should not be lengthy. Our prayer should be short and sweet. You see, some people, when they pray, they teach God everything from Genesis to Revelation. No. You see, Elia, you see, huh? in front of everybody, you see, they were all shouting the ball, prophets and all. But what did Elia do? You see, Elia made a simple prayer. God answered his prayer. So similarly, a direct, you see, pouring out of our hearts to the Lord, a sincere prayer. That is the prayer which God listens. Dear brethren, okay, now, at last, uh, should we pray for the whole world? Some people pray, oh Lord, please pray that the whole world be converted, uh, kneel down in front of Christ, and accept the King of Kings, Lord of Lord. Okay, now should we pray to the world or not? Our example is our master. So let us see if Jesus prayed to the world. Read with us. John 17, 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but ah, for them. You see, I pray not for the world. Uh -huh. I pray for them. That means what them is. What? Huh? Foreign politicians. Fish and politicians. No, no, no. He is told I pray only for the disciples, dear brethren. So, disciples, you, I pray for them in the church. You see, we should pray for the faithful followers of Christ, not uh, for the worldly people, dear brethren, not for the politicians, not for the kingdoms of this world. Uh, is all the kingdoms of God's enemies, sir. Okay? So, when Jesus never prayed for the world, there is no use of praying for the world now because God has made a plan for the whole world in thousand years. They will come back. You should have faith in God's plan. Okay. But last, in which position we can pray? Many people prayed in different positions. All these positions, God's children have prayed. But when we come to a prayer hall, you see, it is good that we stand and pray when everybody is standing and praying. You see, that is the sincere prayer which God listens. Therefore, whose prayer God answers? You see, God answers the consecrated prayer. Consecrated person who is abiding in Christ and in whom God's words abide, you see, his prayer is answered by the Lord. Okay, so this is the subject of prayer. I'll send you the notes. Any questions, any doubts you have, you can ask. Muslim brother, did you reach home? Uh, could you be able to understand? Yes, brother, I, I got uh, today's classes about the prayer.